Hello everybody. Today I'm going to go over how to use coroutines in Unity. So why would you use a coroutine? Well coroutines are really good functions at dealing with delays. So if you have in your function if you have to wait for something or have a little bit of delay before you do something, coroutines are really good at that because they have a built-in method called wait. So a common use for coroutines is with timers, because you gotta wait for an amount of time to pass before you in increment your timer. So, in my little scene here, I have set up a little skeleton for a timer. Uh, we just gotta do all the programming, and with that, we're going to use coroutines. So, let's just look at the scene right now, really quick. Up here we have the timer text, which is just our display for the time passed. We have a start time button, that's going to start the timer, as well as a stop time button, which is turned off right now. We have our reset button, which is going to reset the time back to zero, zero. And on our event system, we have our manager script, which is going to hold our coroutine, as well as everything else for this timer. Uh, it takes in the timer text, the play button, and the stop button. So let's take a look at this manager script now. So as you can see here, we have the three variables that are showed in the editor, as well as two ints, one for the seconds and one for the minutes, as well as the reset button set up to reset the time. And the start time and stop time are started. Uh, the, the buttons uh, will swap uh, positions. So when you click start, the play button will get turned off, the stop button will get, will get turned on, and the opposite for start time, or stop time. So now we just gotta start our coroutine. And let's just jump right into it. So in order to make a coroutine, you make it the same way you would any other function. So you, you can label it public or private, and it needs a return type, which to label a, a coroutine a coroutine, you need to use an I enumerate tor. And then make sure it's tor. That's a, it has to be that. And then you just can name it anything you want. So I'll just call it run timer. So as you see here, we have an error because we don't have a return type. And so you might be asking, well, what's the return type of an I enumerator? Well, the return type can actually be our wait command. So if we type yield return new, and we type in just wait, we'll get quite a few options we can pick from. Uh, wait till uh, end of frame, wait for the fix update, wait for seconds, seconds real time, etc, etc. Um, the one we're going to be using is, sec is wait for seconds. And when we do that, we just give it a time, so we'll say 4 seconds. This is just to show you that that counts as our return value. So as long as you have one delay in your coroutine, you don't need to have any return values, because that is our return value for the for the function. And what happens when it runs into this, unlike with other functions where they hit a return and then the function will stop, the I, I enumerator will keep going after the return is hit. So after it hits this line, it will do this line, so it will wait, wait four seconds, and then it will continue onwards. So let's just get into what we need. So we want this function to run forever until we tell it to stop. So I'm just going to type well, while true. And that is just going to be an infinite loop that's going to just keep running the same commands over and over and over. And so while true, I'm going to tell it to, I should have just kept the uh, yield statement I had before. 
wait for seconds. And the timer I have only counts seconds and minutes, so I'm just going to tell it to wait for one second. And after, after it gets to one second, after it waits one second, I'm going to take seconds, and I'm going to add to it. Increase it by one. And then I'll do an if check to see if seconds are equal to 60. And if they are, then I go minute, increase that, and set back seconds to zero. And then after that, just set our text accordingly. So timer dot text equals minutes dot to string plus no, I don't have a space. So that plus seconds dot to string. And that's our coroutine. Simple as that, it will keep running that line, that uh, if statement, and the increase of these seconds and all that, it will just keep running that forever until I tell it to stop. Um, if I didn't have this while wow loop here, it would just run through it once. It would w still wait for this one second, but after it completed that one second, it will just keep going, and then once it got to the end, it would stop. But with this uh, while statement here, this is just going to keep running forever. Now, the way you call a, a, a I enumerator or a coroutine is different. You can't just call it the same way you usually do. The way you do st call it is start coroutine. And then you, type, you can just type in the name. So it'll be run timer. And that is how you call a coroutine. And now what it's going to do is just, once it gets to that line, is it's going to start that function up. And the way you stop a coroutine is you got to call another command. And you can either call stop coroutine, which is good for when you want to stop a very specific coroutine. Or you can call stop all coroutines, which will, cur will stop all currently running coroutines. Since we only have the one, we might as well keep it simple and just call stop all coroutines. Because we only have one coroutine and we know like that's the one we want to stop. So let's build this and go and see how that works. In game. I was a bit concerned there because nothing was loading. Um so let's see, when we click start, since I've linked everything up beforehand, it should start a timer up. And as you see there, it's starting, counting up every second. And when we click stop, the coroutine should stop. And as you see there, it stopped. And when we click start again, it will start right back up, continuing, for go, continuing on. So you can see there, like, this would be good for, like, a pause. So when you pause the game, this is a way to pause your timer. And when we click reset, it just goes back down to zero. And everything is set up fine. Now I'm going to fast forward a little bit and wait for this to clock over to a minute, just so you can see that it handles if statements and everything fine as well. See you then. All right, welcome back. And you see here, it's... Almost at a minute, it should just clock right over, and there we go. If statement handled, continues on like nothing happened. And that is the basics of coroutines. If you have any questions about the tutorial, or if you would like to suggest a topic for my next tutorial, leave a comment down below. Thank you, and have a great day.